This is the most ridiculous monitor I have ever used. It is stupidly wide and has the most insane specs. With a 5K resolution, the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 is the equivalent to two 27-inch displays side by side without the ugly bezel down the middle. Upon first impressions, you may ask, why would anybody need a monitor like this. Well, with a 240 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond gray to gray response time, and two millisecond input lag, it's an attractive option for game enthusiasts, and the extra screen width gives you a larger field of view when in game, allowing you to see an enemy sooner before people on a traditional 16 by nine monitor. This combined with Samsung's groundbreaking mini LED technology, providing a comparative experience to OLED, local dimming zones have been increased to 2048 plus 12 bit black levels, one million to one contrast ratio, and quantum HDR support for the peak brightness of 2000 nits, one of the highest available in the market. I have never owned a curved display before and I expected the 1000R curve on the Neo G9 to be quite overwhelming experience and also anticipated some form of distortion to be there when I was working with straight lines inside of my graphic design software. But to my surprise, the curve creates this strange sense of focus. As your peripheral vision is consumed by the screen, you are drawn into the display and forget about your surroundings. When setting up the Samsung Odyssey G9, I'd recommend having a helping hand as the box is the size of a small fridge and the monitor is heavy and difficult to lift Low. It's nice that Samsung included a display port and a USB cable, but for the premium price, I would have expected a cable for each of the HDMI 2.1 inputs as well. It took a while to adapt to the huge screen when playing video games, particularly first person shooters. But after a day with the monitor, I felt comfortable with the extra sense of motion. As expected, third person games are breathtaking. Red Dead Redemption 2 with a wide field of view is one of the best gaming experiences I have ever had. The improved colors of the Neo G9 makes this game pop and being able to appreciate the beautiful surroundings almost felt like I was in the game world, and the transition from gameplay to pre-rendered cutscenes was smooth and didn't break immersion. I wish I could say the same about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. During gameplay segments, this game is fantastic, but the frequent occurrence of cutscenes destroys the focus sensation the Neo G9 creates, and it kept reminding me that I'm just not a Jedi, I'm playing a video game. Although many game developers optimize their games for the 32 by 9 aspect ratio, do be aware of a few titles like this that may not be perfect and cause discontent connection from the immersive experience. Simulator games were also great. This is probably one of my most played and favorite genres from when I was a teenager, and the Neo G9 is far better than any triple screen setup I have ever tried, as there are no bezels causing a distraction. Racing simulators had a great sense of speed, improved view of the road and surroundings, increasing my accuracy when cornering. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a whole nother level, and the only word that can describe this game is wow. The clear view of all of the controls within the cockpit made it easy to make adjustments on the fly. Literally. For a monitor this large and heavy, the stand is well designed. You have height adjustment, tilt, and swivel. There is also a cable management channel built into the stand, which made hiding my various cables simple and easy. Although I do wish the monitor went higher when it's set to its maximum height. If you are pretty tall, you may find yourself looking down onto the monitor, which could be a little bit frustrating. There is compatibility for a VESA monitor arm if monitor positioning is a problem. A nice touch at the rear is a headphone holder. This is very handy and keeps my headphones off my desk when I'm not gaming and I'm working with my studio monitors. However, as the display is so wide, placement of my speakers without them being blocked was difficult and required an unconventional desk layout. You should be aware that there are no internal speakers built into this monitor, which is pretty bad considering that this monitor costs more than like a high-end 65 inch TV. I do think there should be some form of sound. In terms of connectivity, there is a headphone jack, display port, USB 3.0, and two HDMI 2.1 ports, making it perfect for connecting next generation gaming consoles like the PS5 that support 120 hertz gaming. However, if you're hoping for ultra wide console gaming, that is simply not possible as games consoles display in a 16 by nine format. So the image will appear stretched or with black bars either side. But when using Samsung's picture by picture feature, you can create a dual monitor setup, having your PlayStation or Xbox displayed on one half of the screen and your computer on the other for listening to music or browsing the web, for example. Although this is a gaming monitor, I found video editing to be faster and easier due to the extended timeline and having access to all of my panels on one screen. An issue I did experience with Mac OS was this strange flickering when a dark background appeared. This didn't happen on Windows, so I'm assuming it has something to do with my Thunder I will be doing a full dedicated video to all of the productivity aspects of this monitor, so make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss that video when I upload it. Originally, I bought this monitor expecting it to be a gimmick and I would return it. But after a full week of use, I don't think I could go back to a regular 16 by nine monitor. And even though this 49 inch display is massive and looks stupid on my desk, the experience for both gaming, video editing and productivity work is perfection.